Stop living in the past. Have you heard that before? Probably a million times. And yet so many people are living in the past. It means that they're using the experiences that they had yesterday to tell them who they are today and how things are in their life today and even how things are going to be in the future. But I came to tell you, God wants you to move beyond the past and let Him define for you how your world is today and how it's going to be tomorrow. Hey, Pastor Avery here. Are you living in the past? In other words, do you let the experiences of yesterday tell you how things are going to be today? I'm all for experience. I'm all for learning from the past. I'm all for remembering fondly the good things. I'm all for healing from the bad things. But the truth is, there's no power in living in the past. It's over with. And God wants us to live in the power of today. God wants us to live in the power of today and trust not in the experiences of the past, but trust in His Word. I want to read to you in Isaiah chapter 43. It says, Do not call to mind the former things or ponder things of the past. Behold, I will do something new. Now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will even make a roadway in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I want you to, let's go through this. Let's see what Isaiah is teaching us here. He says, do not call to mind the former things or ponder things of the past. Listen, when you constantly filter your world today through your experiences of yesterday, you miss out on possibilities that could happen. Just because it happened a certain way yesterday doesn't mean it's going to happen that way today. And just because something that you tried failed yesterday doesn't mean it's going to fail today. God is always doing new things. Amen. Thank God for yesterday. Thank God for what he did and the memories we have and the lessons we learned. But God is always doing something new and he wants to do something new in your life. But he can't do something new if you don't see it. Look what he says here. Will you not be aware of it? God is trying to do something new, but if you're so busy staring at yesterday, you will miss the new thing that God wants to do today. He says, I'll do things like make a river in the desert, a roadway in the wilderness. In other words, things that normally don't work, I'll make them work. But you can't do that if you're relying upon yesterday. You have to be prepared to receive and accept and delve into something new, something exciting, something that is today. There's no power in the past. The power is in today. And God is always doing something new. So yes, remember the past. You can even learn lessons from the past, but don't let those lessons, don't let your experience of life yesterday tell you how your world is today. Let God's word tell you how your world is today. You see, something spectacular happens at salvation. You become a new creature in Christ. Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. In verse 16, it says, Therefore, from now on, we recognize no one according to the flesh. Now, he says, from now on. That means there's a moment where we stopped it and we're doing something different. We recognize no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now... We know him in this way no longer. In other words, there's a change in our paradigm. There's a change in our viewpoint. There's a change in how we view life and the world. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. New is the opposite of old, isn't it? He is a new creature. The old things, not just the old person, the old things have passed away. And behold, new things have passed. Come. Amen. How can God give you a new world if your viewpoint is only on the old one? How can God make you a new person if your viewpoint is only on the old one? 
Stop letting yesterday define who you are. Verse 16 is so important. We always key in on 17, but 16 is so important. It says we don't look at anyone according to the flesh anymore. In other words, you don't let anyone define you by the old man that you used to be. You're a new creature in Christ. And don't look at other people by the old man they used to be. They are new creatures in Christ. Now, I want to give you a little secret here. It's not only talking about the salvation transformation because God is continually doing new things. Don't look at people according to what happened in their yesterday. Look at them according to what God says about them and their situation today and interpret your world that way. Are you catching this? Oh, I hope you're getting this down in your spirit. Don't let yesterday define how you are and who you are. That's good stuff. Don't let your experiences of yesterday interpret your world today. Let God's Word interpret your world. Oh, and God's Word says such things as you are a new creature in Christ. God's Word says that you are victorious. God's Word says that you are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. God's Word says that you are going to come out on top and that in the end you will win. Praise God. God bless you guys. I hope you've gotten uh, so much out of this series, How to Interpret Your World. See, if you change the way you relate to and interpret your surroundings, it will change your contentment and your peace of mind. And you, like the Apostle Paul, can say, in all things, no matter what's going on in my life, I have learned to be content. God bless you guys. I love you guys. Uh, Keep going forward for Christ.